Hi, welcome to the Modern Renaissance Man Show. I'm Ben Cuffin, the Modern Renaissance Man. Glad you could join us. In this 4th of July month, we're celebrating 4th of July still. We've been, uh, we had our big three-year anniversary show two weeks ago. Hopefully you caught that. And uh, uh, basically we're still here because we were really, uh, we're not able to drive and they locked us up and said we weren't safe on the roads. Interestingly enough, we didn't have any alcoholic beverages. Uh, so we've been here for two, two weeks now and we're all pretty zany. Anyway, uh, 4th of July. It's a political year, big time presidential year. We're going to talk a lot about politics. We're going to have a special for you tonight. Books that interest teens. We're going to have uh, my musical special co-host and project co-host and everything else co-host. Katie S. Copeland is going to be joining us and uh, talk a little bit about some of the neat books that uh, teens have gotten into and uh, at least what she's gotten into. Before we go there, though, speaking of July, do remember our men and women in the military as you're celebrating uh, our country's freedoms and liberties, whether you agree with the political system or not. Remember the men and women that serve in our military, regardless of the war and conflict that they're in, if you disagree with that. <laughs> Excitement in the workplace. Oh, yeah, let's applaud. Applaud for them. I agree. Let's, 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 that's excellent. Thank you. Um, Excitement in the workplace. You know, sometimes I think, you know, what can, what can we do to make things better? I think we should have glass floors in the elevators. It'd be a great thing. You get on the building. I work in a you know thirty-something story building. And I go up only nineteen floors of it. Wouldn't it be cool just to step in and as it goes up, you just look down and you just watch it happen? Well, wouldn't it just set your day off just nicely, wouldn't it? You know, and uh, actually, just think about it. Businesses could reap the benefit because people wouldn't want to get on the elevator to go home, uh, and if they <laughs> so they may actually choose the stairs. So then you got another benefit. Then they're healthy because they're walking the stairs to go down. Glass floors in the elevator. Why is Cherry Berry's picture still in there? Let's get this woman out of the elevator. She's the commissioner of. Uh, labor of North Carolina. We spend thousands of dollars to stick her picture in every elevator in the state of North Carolina. Cherry Berry. She doesn't even look that good. Um, <laughs> she doesn't look that good. <laughs> now here's one. Now, 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 now this, is not, this is not a racial slam, but, but I work uptown. I see a lot of construction and I've started to find something interesting. Um, the segregation of construction workers in Mecklenburg County. Uh, what I've noticed is that there are no black men hardly working in construction mm -hmm. business. I don't know why. Where they go? I see 75% Hispanic, probably, mm -hmm. and about 25% non-Hispanic, predominantly white. Where are the black? Where are the black men? At? Are they leaving the city? Somebody let me know. Send me an email. What's happening <laughs> to the black the men city. in Beckenburg County? Uh, it's, it's an odd situation here. I, and uh, I thought, like I said, with the Hispanic workers. Uh, recently, the, the uh, disturber, local disturber, announced that uh, roughly 75% of the injuries in construction sites were to the Hispanic workers. Well, 75% of the workers on construction sites are Hispanic workers. Duh! Um, so let's think about that one. Um, I talked to a guy recently from New York, and this is interesting. He was talking about what was the most difficult thing about moving to the South, and what he said was that. He couldn't get used to the politeness and when he moved into Charlotte. You know what I was thinking? Charlotte's rude. <laughs> and if he thinks it's polite, I definitely don't want to cross the Mason-Dixon line going back up. Uh, so I don't know where this guy came from, but uh, Charlotte's turned into uh, a lot more rudeness than, than when I was used to growing up. Great energy solution on helping cats. Here we got the gas crunch going on. Basically, prices are soaring high up here. I think they should take the cat's trains cut holes in the floors and basically they give discounts to people who are willing to either they put their feet through the floors or they can do uh, maybe pedals like bicycles and they can help pedal and generate energy for the cat's trains. Hey, we can actually, you know, it's like a Flintstone thing, you know, and we can get some energy and we can encourage more riders and then we also get uh, healthier people riding instead of just sitting on the trains. Flintstone yeah. cats. Uh, let's think about that. They can and, uh, and of course, while they're Drive, yeah, they get their work, they work, get their work out. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of just being all lazy, you know, right. they can they can pedal a bike and it generates electricity and right. you know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's that. I cats, know. Flintstones, let's, let's, <laughs> great combination. Let's think about that. I think I'll go to my soap. <laughs> Speaking of energy, I want to do a reprise soap for you. Seems appropriate. Imagine this. Imagine a few years from now, you've got this neat subcompact car, and you're so happy that you pull away from the gas pump, and you've only spent 
110, 120 dollars to fill it up. Oh. Pretty depressing, actually, isn't it? When will leaders take real steps on transportation and gas issues? With gas skyrocketing, you think someone in government would have vision. Gas will be ten dollars a gallon within the next five to ten years. We need new ways to carry passengers and new ways to carry commerce. Again, I propose a national rail system. A national rail system could utilize the existing interstates. The inner lanes can be converted to tracks. Face it, the interstates were actually created as part of the Constitution to provide paths for our military to go between the states. That was the whole, person, whole point of it is that the Constitution guarantees that the U.S. government will support roads, maintain a road system, that is for the transportation. If you never notice that every so many miles, the interstate gets to a straight point, and it's real straight for at least a mile. That is so aircraft, military aircraft, can land on the interstate. Don't know if you knew that or not. That's the whole purpose. You'll notice you'll curve a while, and it'll get straight for at least a mile. And I think it's every either three to five miles. We're not gonna do that anymore. We need to use the interstates for something that's really going to help our country. Stick rails down the middle of it. Let's have a national rail system. Governments can make it affordable. They can make it dependable. They can make it convenient. A national rail system could be operated just like any metro system. Let's run a bunch of trains back and forth across the country. And so you don't wait for just one. We run several after the other. We could have 50, 60 trains running at the same time across the different tracks around the country. Initially, maybe you only create the stops at the major cities. You know, maybe Charlotte, Raleigh, no, just Charlotte. Uh, and then, <laughs> I had to stab that one in, I'm sorry. But the bigger cities, Atlanta, you know, Jacksonville, Flor uh, Orlando, down to Florida, down to Miami. But going up the East Coast, going out West, catch the interstates. We got 95, we got 40, we got 10. We got a lot of major interstates that we could utilize for a national rail system, for people and for commerce. Think about it. We reduce large truck fuel consumption. We reduce the number of cars on the road. And look at this, extra benefit. It creates a nice jobs program to put a lot of people to work. And with many immigrants as we are coming to this country, anything we can do to create jobs to help people provide for themselves is a good idea to me. It'll boost the economy and it, create, and it also create an affordable tourism. People actually start going to places. They're not gonna be able to drive at $10 a gallon. They're not gonna be going many places other than very local places. So you increase tour tourism. We reduce pollutions. So we help our environment. We also um, incorporate new technologies if we choose to with it. Think about it. You can use electric trains. They can incorporate solar panels. And when they're running on some electricity, guess what? You can stick wind turbines on top of them and help recharge those batteries as they're going down the road. Our economy depends on radical change. Our environment depends on radical change. Our future depends on radical change. Not just political, presidential election rhetoric. Let's be chic. Let's be European. Let's start the national rail system now. That's the way I feel. And with that, I want to turn it over to the band. And before we go to the band, let me say that this is the last regular show that Anna Gallant will be playing with us. Anna, yes. it's been wonderful. Glad you're here for the uh, the Fourth of July. Thank you. And you survived the two-week lockup in the show. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so we've done pretty well, and uh, <laughs> and we didn't we didn't kill each other yet, uh, but we still got a few more minutes left of the program. Uh, we're glad you were part of the show and wish you well in your endeavors. And you will be on TV because we'll do musical specials with you. I'm just going to ask her to come when I'm on the show every time I come. And then I'm going to say, hey, you want to get up and do a song? <laughs> like that half yeah, like yeah. Well, I'll leave that one to y'all. With that, I'm going to turn over the music. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not happy anymore 
and I'm not happy any less. What is it that I feel? Even kill at its best. Seeing couples walk around, wonder if they act that way. When they get behind closed doors, cause one leaves and the other stays. As they're sorting out their things, who gets the diamond ring? It's not like he can wear it. Who knows, but I'd rather sing Sing of times that are happy Feeling good about myself Dancing, laughing, feeling happy Not trying to please someone else live I think something went off okay hope you are still with us look like we blacked for a moment maybe it was uh, just my eyes I'm Ben Copeland the modern renaissance man hopefully my director is still awake maybe he just fell over on the desk uh, no, I, I don't know so. we'll see anyway uh, Dean you need to throw stuff at him keep him awake for those of you who've been watching, this is July. This is election month. This is we're still celebrating our third year anniversary with the show. I know you've probably seen every single episode on the show. I know I have not. Um, anyway, I have a poem for uh, the last la leaving political candidate who's no longer in the running as of that we know of. Who knows? You might have come back in. But anyway, this is a poem I wrote for Hillary Rodham Clinton. <clears throat> Ready for this? It's to a very famous poem that you might have heard called Hickory Dickory Dock. Okay. <laughs> Just so you can keep the cadence in mind. Hillary Rodham Clinton, the vote she couldn't get them. Barack got more and slammed shut the door. Poor Bill is emotionally smitten. Hillary Rodham Clinton lost her lead, so now she's quitting. Her gender did lose while they sat back and snoozed. They cry now. She is the victim. 
Hillary Rodham Clinton will appear at Obama's convention. She will not show she's sore as Barack takes the floor because the Senate is again her intention. And I rewrote that. They should have said because 2012 is her really intention. Hillary Rodham Clinton, closest female to executive position. I'm remorse, can't you see, that Willie won't be in the White House is our first sex kitten. Oh, that was terrible. I had to go after Bill. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I can do that. I, I met Bill Clinton, and Bill Clinton was a neat guy. When I met him, I agreed to vote for him right there and there in that spot. I was at the, um, the Charlotte Convention Center um, the year he was actually running for the first time, and I was actually helping out on a different campaign. And uh, he decided to come through, just walking through, and I yelled over at him, hey, Bill, can you get your autograph? He actually stopped, pushed the Secret Service agent guy back so I could come up to him shook my hand and for that moment he looked at me and I was the person in the world that he was focused on and he signed a card and I knew right then and there I will vote for this man so if you don't like Bill that's fine but he had it he had a charisma he's pretty wild now with the stuff that's been going on but uh, if you get the chance to meet somebody like that you'll find out do they really have it do they have the charisma do they have what it takes obviously he did he stayed in it for eight years with that uh, we got two guests tonight we're gonna bring out uh, First one here, um, basically do something a little different. Kate S. Copeland, come on out. All right, 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 right. Okay, since I can't hug you, can you shake your hand? Fine. There you go. Kate, uh, Kate, Kate is our key grip, Roman host cam operator, best girl, and now she's into some neat Wrap books. Off. Wrap it up. And uh, she's going to stand here and tell me what to do. Uh, but I wanted to talk about some books and some of the things she's been reading. Because you're into a lot of different kind of books, and uh, you can get them at the public library. Prices are great unless you're late. Uh, I guess you don't want me to do the host cam with you, huh? Uh, no. No? Your hair looks good. Should do it. So, anyway, so what did you bring us? What kind of books you bring us tonight? Tell us about what, what you brought. Okay, I'll just start off with this one since this one so far is my favorite. Okay, what is that? The, com the Complete Idiot's Guide to Ast Astronomy. Astrology. Astrology. That's what? Whoops. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> These are library books. And uh, so what, what, what's the interest you about astrology? I don't know. It's just I've been doing some research of my own mm -hmm. birthday and yours and mom's my way. Yours explains a lot. I'm sure it does. <laughs> and, what, and what's your sign? Actually, I'm on the cusp between two of uh, Gemini and Cancer. In fact, what? in most countries, it's confusing. Oh. June 20th is a very We're pretty confused in this country, too. But okay, don't go there! <laughs> but you're predominantly Gemini, aren't you? Well, you know in this country, yes. Mm -hmm. But in other countries, I'm Cancer. Okay. You want to read the book? I don't want to. No, that's okay. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Stop, I will hit you! <laughs> what else you bring us? Astrology, interesting. That's heavy. I was looking for something light and fun. <laughs> you take it. Okay. What else you got? Okay, this is a book for probably younger kids who are into sort of magic and sort of monsters kind of thing. It's called Avalon, and Dan, Dan you got a good zoom yep. in on this? Yeah, you got it. It's about a girl named, well, actually, it starts, it's the beginning of a series. I've, actually, this is the first the first book in two series. Mm -hmm. Now, how old are the girls in it? Well, I'd age? say about middle school sort mm -hmm. of ages. It actually doesn't really mention their names at all, so it's kind of hard. It's about, well, this book is about a girl named Emily. Well, her parents are divorced, and she'd moved to this wood. I don't place. Where the heck is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I forget what town she moves to. Oh, Pennsylvania. Now, that's not a graphic novel. That's a conventional no. type of book. In it. Yeah, okay. Well, you know. Which kind all of right. did you think I was going to bring? I didn't know, but I anyway. I was going to bring all manga. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about manga, too. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, it's about, a, it's about a girl named Emily. She gets into this new town, and, well, she she really doesn't believe in magic at all until she finds, well, her mother owns this veterinarian office, and one day she loses a dog in this woods that supposedly has a monster in it, and they found a lot of animals dead with glowing wounds and stuff like that. Seriously, if someone's into science fiction sort of things, you're right, we're going to read this. I'm suggesting this okay. to you. Since yeah, you well, maybe I'll read stuff. it. I like to read about little girls in the woods and monsters. <laughs> what's the, what else you got for us here? What's the, what's the, what's the other one? That's a graphic novel, isn't it? Yeah. This okay. Is, I cannot really pronounce the title. Uh, let's see if you could try. It's uh, Shugo Chara. Okay. I guess that's Japanese. Good. Sort of. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Japanese. And what's the cool thing? I, I, like, I love this. One of the things that uh, I'm very proud of Katie, she's very ambidextrous. And uh, she switches between uh, basically American books, which is your normal uh, read left to right, mm -hmm. go to the back of the book. 
Whereas with the, the manga style and the Japanese type books, you're actually reading the other way, so you actually turn the pages the other way. Plus, you read, read right the opposite left. way, read oh. right to left. And oh, uh, and she switches between them pretty well. It's kind of easy. Uh, uh, well, no, not for everybody, Can't but you do it real well. Rob. So what is this one that you brought here? This, uh, okay, Shira Chara. It's just mostly about a girl like another one of these girls who apparently doesn't believe in magic. Oh. At all. Terrible. Well, there's not really that much magic in this book. It's mostly about... It says in the book that every child is born with an egg with an egg in their heart. Don't ask. Okay, don't make a joke about this. Don't go there. Okay. I saw you. I saw you were going to. Oh, go he's got a joke. joke hanging in the background. Go yes, ahead. I know. <laughs> That's why I said that. I know. Anyway, so she, they call them character eggs. There's just stuff they want to be. Like I'm not gonna like your character will probably be someone who's actually funny. No. Oh, yeah. It might be. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we snipe at each other on occasion. Okay. <laughs> so, what's your what? What do you like the the graphic novels, the manga kind of book? What I do you know. like about it? I just like them. I mean, if I can't uh -huh. watch them on TV, hey, this is the best thing. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, YouTube. is it the combination of the words and the pictures? Or, sort of, pretty much. So the, you have, you know, when you read this book, you do come up with some scenes in your head. But uh -huh. in this book, it's actually kind of funnier to just read because they also have sound. They also have sort of like sound effects in here. The Japanese versions of sort of things. It's kind of cool if you want to read through them sometimes to see them. Anyway, I just really like it because they sometimes have scenes in the book that cannot be seen in sort of like a regular kind of book written mm -hmm. down. Well, I picked it back up on that for myself. A lot of the uh, some of the comic book stuff, some of those things. Okay, that's that really count. Well, that's a graphic kind of thing, especially when they're all exactly. packed together. Anyway, we're glad you could join us for the books. Public Library, you can find neat books. And you might see Kate browsing through them if we go to the South County Library because we're there a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know, but you know we'll probably see somebody crawling on the floor here in a minute. <laughs> you know, we've, we've had that before on this show. Anyway, thank you, Kate. Thanks for joining us, and I'll let you go. I know you want, want to run off. We're going to have another guest here in just a little bit. One of the things I want to say is that we have a website. <laughs> www.mrmtv.org. Please, please send us an email, please. <laughs> and uh, please send us an email, mrm at together.net. And with that, I think we're going to swap off and see about another guest coming out. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. Jennifer Sanders okay, is going to join us again. If you caught her last week. <laughs> thank you for coming. Good beer. Uh, before we do that, uh, what would we didn't we got to always got to do the host camps if it'll warm up here for us. Uh, well, while it warms up, and I'm sitting here eating up my airtime. Seriously. Let's talk about a movie. Library. We talked about books. So good. Brought this movie. This is one, this we is one I actually on. picked out. Yeah. Well, I picked it out. Yeah, but we agreed on it. Yeah, well, we anyway, this is. Sounds a, like y'all agreeing on it. This is a movie called uh, Casanova. Yes. We now agree on uh, movies. <laughs> so you get it at the library, Casanova. And it's about the, the, the Casanova. <laughs> it is a neat little film. It was a fun film. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I hate that Heath Ledger, you know, his dad now, and he was in that because it made me really realize how wonderful he was. I don't go there. Anyway, <laughs> it was so a fun sad. movie. If you want to watch it, it's a fun movie. Don't worry about whether the people died or not. Uh, <laughs> Making the movie. It's a, it's a cute, it's a cute, <laughs> it's a cute movie. A One of the things I found is you have Heath, Heath Ledger, and he was in the uh, uh, Brokeback Mountain, uh, the Gay Caballero movie. Um, do and then he turns right around and does Casanova. So I guess he couldn't make up his mind. Maybe that's why he died. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it's a great little movie, Casanova. Get it at the library. Price is great unless you're late. Um, I've got to hold this up. Here, somebody was toasting me for my uh, my third anniversary here. And this is my toast. Uh, can we get a picture? You probably can't see it. But anyway, oh, that is showing up. Can we zoom in? Is that as tight as we can get? Does that work? Yes. They, I have MRM. Toast. <laughs> uh, so I was toasted tonight for my successful three years uh, of show. Uh, okay. Anyway, so some people need to have a life. But that's okay. But it was done well. It was, it was done great. I really love it. I'm really proud of it. And I'll take it and I'll put it on my pillow for a year or two. Just keep it and love it. Um, politics. What's cranking up? Um, I'm just not happy because Joseph Biden's not in the race anymore. He was the one you I You really like him I like lot. Joseph Biden. Yes, he should do. be. He should have been president. He, he just, he, he was, was the wrong sex, he's the wrong color, he didn't have any money. I mean, that just sort of killed him. At least, and he stood presidential. He had that presidential mm -hmm. stature, you know, about him. The one thing that I liked him is that, is that during the, uh, I forget, one of the big, you'll remember, the big uh, 
hearings they did, and he left and went home and had a crown, uh, no, he had a root canal done on a yes, train to go did. back to visit his yes, boys because he, he believed in going home. He wouldn't live in Washington. But, um, was that the Watergate hearings? Was that or was oh, it God. the confirmation for what's his face into the uh, Supreme Court? Anyway. Well, I brought Jennifer out here to talk some more about politics, but I think we're really about out of time, politics. What's the key thing that uh, you think about the political situation that's going on right now with the presidents? Um, with the presidential race? Uh -huh. Well, it's boring now that Hillary's <laughs> dropped out. I was really looking forward to Yeah, you know, I watch it for so much entertainment now um, because I just don't understand it like I used to. But basically, it's just going to be boring. I mean, we, we picked the candidates. I'm really worried about now what to watch at the Democratic National Convention because it's already I'm not going to watch it. They've already elected. Well, no, there's going to be some good speeches, matter. and they'll be good for that. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, hopefully, if you don't watch the convention, you'll be turning on this show instead. <laughs> Make up my Renaissance man. I want to thank all of our volunteers. This show would not happen without them. We're out of time. Sorry, I run this one a little tight. Dano, my director, <laughs> Dean on audio. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, stay tuned for future shows. Dornan's going to take us out with some good tunes, and you'll be seeing them on musical specials coming up, particularly probably next month. Good evening. I'm Ben Copeland.